another tab of this glass and pour over YouTube video. This is our last kind of Christmassy one of this year because unfortunately due to my, uh, my little bout of sickness um, I didn't get some of them done but I had this little idea of this one. I found these lights and I thought oh I want to do something with glass with those lights and I made this kind of midnight moon um, with these stringers and put these lights around it and today I'm going to show you how to make this. It's beautiful with the lights on but it's also even great with the lights off. So the first thing we need to do, I wanted to do, was think about the stand. Now I wanted to make a stand that would fit the battery pack for the lights in. So effectively I cut a piece of glass and my idea was to have a piece of glass, a sort of box created that was like this round the, the lights that then my moon could s slip into this side. And it would be quite tight, I might always have to put something else in to help wedge it but effectively it would stand up like this and then the wire could come round here and be, the wire could be round the moon. So that was my idea. Now to create the um, void, I needed to use some fibre paper. So effectively I need to make sure I've got enough space for my dam because I'm going to need to dam this to hold it in place. So I've cut the fibre paper to the width of the bottom piece of glass. I now have a side piece of glass and a piece of fibre paper. I've used three mil, you could have used one mil here if you wanted to, to go like this. So you've got your box and then I'm pushing it quite tight, fitting my other piece of glass and another piece of fibre paper. I'm using these kiln posts to dam. If you've got smaller things, you can use them to dam instead. And then this piece, I'm just nice a bit dirty, so I'm cleaning on my jumper. That's a good way to clean. Clean on, clean on cleaning cloths, not on your dumper. Um, but it's just some dust from the kiln posts. We'll go on top and I'm just making sure all my pieces of glass are lined up and pushed in tight. So effectively that should fuse together in a box, then I can pull out the fibre paper and this will fit in. It's not going to be the sturdiest of structures, guys. I'm certainly not going to be able to put a lot of um, kind of uh, weight on it but it will work. Now I also quite feel like decorating this with just a few white stars. Now I'm using Aventurine Blue Glass, the whole idea of this kind of being like a midnight sky using um, Aventurine Blue Glass. So I'm just going to put some stars, I'm putting some of our Excels white stars and some of our, our um, smaller normal white stars on here just to sort of decorate the top of this box slightly so it's not quite such a lump of blue glass let's call it say. I mean if you wanted you could try and maybe tuck some other decoration or you could tack fuse the decoration on the sides first and so the sides of the box were decorated as well. So the next I want to draw a template for the moon. Now I started using this when I drew it here but actually I decided I want to try and go a little bit bigger so I'm moving it but I need effectively this base bit which is what will wedge into the gap here and then I'm going to go with the moon now. I'm just sort of going to now sketch it out because I want to try and go a little bit bigger with my moon shape um, to maybe be a slightly bigger project than it was going to be before. Um, so I've got my kind of feeling of my moon there. Um, I need some couple of pieces of glasses, glass for the base. Sorry, I'm just such a got moved. So um, I've cut, I want two layers of Aventurine blue glass. And then I've cut one. I'm not worrying, I know I've kind of got done a funny shape here, but I'm not worrying, that's going to be inside. And then I'm doing another piece on top, which is not quite as big, because then I want to be able to anchor my stringers into it. So now I've got these, um, these are our kind of new, um, they're called midnight blue stringers. Even these small pieces I don't mind, I'll leave on. Now I want to underneath, before I put too many stringers down, put some stars because I feel that this could sit on the middle of a table and could be viewed from both sides. So I want to make sure I've got some stars on the underside as well as the top side of this. I'm just going to put some larger ones, some smaller ones on.
so like that would be nice. But now I'm going to slowly build up with these um, blue stringers, our blue floral stringers. Um, I'm wanting quite a kind of organic feel to this, so I'm literally just going to sort of put them down, keeping to the moon shape for the main the main area, and I'm going to build this up slowly. So here it is, as you can see, I've, this is about 100 grams worth of, um, of these blue, uh, midnight blue stringers uh, on here. Um, I'm going to put some now stars again on this side. Um, I've made sure I've got a lot of stringers here where it's joining with the base. Um, and I've just tried to make sure I've got good coverage all over. Um, it's a bit of an experiment, this one. I'm hoping that I've got enough of a kind of, as I would call it, a lattice to make sure that the whole thing will hold together. I also don't want it to be too heavy. Um, so I'm using the stars, which will also help hold the whole structure together because, and they are, I'm, you know, also this has all got to relax enough together so it can fit in this slot, which I'm now a little bit worried about. Um, that there's, you know, there's only this space for, the, for it to fit in. Um, I hope it will be okay. Uh, okay, putting a few more stars on. Um, I started with 50 grams of stars here. I've used probably two thirds of them. Now I'm just gonna put some little ones on. They are decidedly harder to find. Good anchorage for. Probably a pair of tweezers would have been easier, but never one to do things the easy way. It's quite hard with the line um, around the edge to really be able to see kind of see the project clearly. Um, that I found a bit tricky to know that I've really kind of got the shape of the moon. Well, but it was the same with another project I did with Love. I found it quite hard to see with a Sharpie until it fused together whether you could actually see the word Love. Sometimes you have projects like that. I was also trying to leave enough of a gap to be able to thread the lights through afterwards. I'm hoping there'll be enough gaps so I can kind of poke it through and, and weave the lights through the lattice work. That's one that's going to fall off. It's going to be too hard for me to get. I'll just put a big one here. Um, and maybe a bigger one here, and then I think we are good. Lastly, I've got this fantastic, I love it, dichroic sparkle. Now the problem is, is I'm concerned I don't want the, it to, too much of it to end up on the paper underneath and not on the project. So I'm just sort of placing it lightly where I want it, just to add an extra bit of sparkle and hopefully that I'm not wasting too much on the paper underneath and it will mostly end up in the project looking like a bit of pretty sparkle. So that's done. Now this can go in the foot kiln. It's gonna go on a tack fuse together and it's gonna have a longer nail, guys. Um, this, in fact, I've got some extra sparkle. I'm just gonna put on the top of that. Um, it's, this is quite tricky, this piece here. So it's gonna have a three hour nail and a, um, slow, a, a slow, um, cool down on it. So we'll put that in the kiln and we'll see how this when it comes out. Um, unfortunately this didn't work. This this joined nicely but the um, other bits not so much. So I'm going to glue this. I will use this little piece of paper just to hold it up and glue this together like so. Um, 
it was a, it was a it was a kind of you know long shot it was going to glue and um, once we glue that together we can put the project together. So here this is nice and glued. Um, as you can see the battery pack now fits in um, nice and snugly in it. Uh, you can turn them on like that. So now I need to thread this through. Now this is going to be quite a fiddly job. Uh, maybe some time. Um, but I'm going to start because for each one I've got to thread the whole lot through and it's pretty delicate so I don't want to break it. So I'm going to be a little bit of time here threading all this through and then I'll get you to come back to me when it's all done. So as you can see I've wrapped the lights around it and I've got some hanging down feeling like stars are falling off it. Um, I have tucked the wire in and you know, it's, you know you can get in here and turn it on and off as you need to. I say I'm not being able to do it right this second, but you can if you need to. Um, and, um, you know, I think it's a really kind of cute little Christmassy piece. It's kind of my last little piece of Christmassy one for this year. Um, it looks quite nice from both sides. So it can kind of sit in the middle of the table and be nice. Um, it looks really lovely with the lights off as well. And I think it's kind of a cute piece. This is definitely a piece where, you know, if you find the lights and then make the piece around the lights. And I quite like to do that, I quite like finding things and going, oh, I can do the, you know, do something with glass with that, um, uh, which is where this sort of idea came from. Um, I hope you really like this video. I hope it gives you inspiration to do something similar of your own, because the idea is for you. And um, for, you know, we'll probably get some more Valentine's Day ones out this month, but for all of you out there, because it's kind of hard to wish you a happy festive season when, it's, when we're doing Valentine's Day videos. So wishing you all, of all my customers and all my followers, a really happy festive season for 2021 and let's hope that 2022 is an even better year um, and uh, yeah thank you for all your support and please if you like this video subscribe or um, follow us.